Clear prop. It's always nice when it starts. As you may or may not be able to see, we haven't had snow, just lots and lots of heavy frost. I think the Met today said it was going to be about, feels like, minus 10. Which I can probably agree with, actually. So, anyway, away from everyone, so, sheaf tap. Controls are full and free. My helmet's done up, my harness is done up, and I'm secure. I'm going to get the engine warm today. Darlingmore traffic, Gold Foxtrot, Whiskey Lever, Romeo, lining up runway 01, AstroTurf, Darlingmore. Right, pre takeoff checks, T wave, trim is set, wind and weather are appropriate. It's properly cold today, so not take this long to warm up. With 15 degrees to go before I'm happy to take off. So welcome to the channel. So this is the questions and answers. So anyway, engines just hit my takeoff temperature for my T-wave check. I'm happy to go fly. So can't see anyone else. Nothing on the radio. Let's go for it. Nose wheel straight. Bar in the neutral position. Smoothly through to full power. Forward on the bar. And climbing away, maintaining straight with the runway. Full power achieved. How smooth is it? How smooth is it today? There's a chap that flies an Adam in Cornwall that doesn't like letting go of the bar. So that, for you, John. Here we go, mate. Now the one thing I do like about the hand throttling is if you own an Adam with the retracts. Full power, you take your feet off. Yeah. And now you can you can sort your retracts out. That's one advantage of the hand throttle. We've got Norvely today, so it's chuffing cold. And I've already done a flight today with Mark. Uh, we did a check flight on, a, on an aircraft, so I was self-loading ballast. And uh, we can just see the higher hills have got some snow on it, but there's nothing down here, no snow whatsoever. Still haven't got my snow flight, and it doesn't look like I'm going to have one this year. See what happens in 2023. So let's get in the cruise, and let's do some of these questions. So thank you to everybody that, um, that dropped a question. I filtered them down, because a few of them were silly. <laughs> and I've also um, done a few in isolation. So. There will be a video, depending on which order they come out, and one was about vlogging, and my vlogging setup. Uh, so that's a completely separate video, because that's quite complex, and too much to talk about while I'm flying. Again, Aviate, Navigate, Communicate. And at the moment, I am flying and enjoying this gorgeous, gorgeous weather. Anyway, so the first question I've got is from uh, Luna Meatball. Thank you very much for that, and you say, what are the cruise and top speeds of the machine? Now I did some independent testing with this, so again, speed... Off in the kilo, One fifth of the video, there you go, there's the radio calls coming through, turn it down. Um, I did a video comparison GPS and my airspeed indicator, and the reason for that was I wanted to get basically several runs in different directions, that would have been GPS, but I also wanted to see how well calibrated the airspeed indicator that I had on the side is. And if you took a percentage error, I worked it out that the hands-off trim right now is about 45 to 46 miles an hour. So that's the speed I'm getting, doing absolutely nothing. Putting power on or reduce, increasing the power or reducing the power does not change the speed. It only changes the rate you climb. Now that goes to the top speed. Now the wing is rated at 55. Now when I did go to full power, the airspeed indicator only goes to 55, 
and it was jammed hard against the top. So, and I was exceeding that on the uh, on my average speed. So, so to literally go full power, all I'm trying to do is I'll be increasing the power and maintaining that attitude, trying to keep the nose down. I can't, so I've actually got to reduce the power to stop myself. Cl I'm climbing right now. So, there we go. A bit more power. That, and it's restricted by your tummy. So. Let's uh, let's get back to normal cruise. So thank you for that lunar lunar meatball. Uh, next question. Sorry if I'm reading at the side. The bit of paper I printed out is at an angle. So uh, Johnny Boy 75 says um, it's not a sub 70 question, but in line with your checks, what briefing do you give passengers? You've always wondered uh, what to brief them or whether you brief them enough. So. When I do trial flights, I do give them a safety brief, and that links in with the fact of propellers are dangerous, uh, starting introducing them to the aircraft, understanding that the engine is always live. Again, it, it may save them at another time, not just for that flight. The harness, the whole point of the harness, the fact that they how to get in and out of the aircraft, linking them with the harness. So in the event of an emergency, and you are incapacitated, they know how to get out of the, out of the aircraft. So that's kind of the safety elements. Then I start briefing them on the controls because you don't want them to accidentally flick something. I mean, I appreciate the magnetos are, uh, dual magnetos on a dual seat is normally guarded, but they may inadvertently catch them and not know what they've done. So if they know that that's a dangerous thing to do, they won't do it. Equally so, hand throttle and choke, where they are and what they do. Okay. So, the, so those are the, the, the basis of that. A brief introduction to the instruments, what we use them for, but also reassure them that the, uh, you don't actually need instru instruments to fly an aircraft uh, or a flex wing of that nature. How, uh, feet controls, they may be a long-legged long individual, um, so they may restrict your steering. Okay, so on the ground, they may lock up. If you're coming for an approach and landing, they may lock up. So it's basically, please relax on the steering bar. Yeah, and to basically, to enjoy the flight. And a lot of my checks for or briefing actually then coincide with other aspects of why I'm doing my checks. I verbalise my checks so they know what's happening. You know, this may, may be their first experience to flying. Um, so talking through why you're, doing, why you're doing it, okay? Just little things like that that will allow them to have confidence and you have confidence in they're not going to do something stupid, all right? Uh, yeah, bits like that. Uh, so hopefully uh, Johnny Boy 75 thank you for the question and that's answered it uh, now Tom Kabat thank you for your question Tom if you haven't heard of Tom Kabat he has a wonderful YouTube channel I'll leave a link here but don't run away yes I'll leave, I'll leave also leave it in the description uh, he's paramotorist but is also doing some GA training and I'm pretty sure Tom you're working towards your commercial aren't you uh, but he's got a, wa a wonderful YouTube channel so go and check out his channel as well we'll come back on the power one, two, three, four. Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 271, let's get a parting out the upwind for 2-3. Gonna make a right turn out to the northeast. Morning, Mooney 2711, whiskey, uh, via bar request. November 2711, whiskey. 1, 2, 3, turn to 2-3-0. 2-3-0. Oh, it's loud. We have started our descent down to Whiskey 1-7. And tell him where you, how you found it as well, that would be really interesting. Uh, Tom says, any big adventures planned in the PB uh, and do I miss the paramotor? So two parts to that. Uh, yes, there are some big adventures planned. Um, I'm not going to talk about them here because they're some really big adventures hopefully this year um, if I can get away from the school. Uh, so looking forward to that and it will be on the PB, it will definitely be on the PB. Um, do I miss paramotoring? Now I'm going to put a bit of a video in here because this is the only bit of paramotoring I kind of miss. used to um, 
with all the extra weight if I was doing a long three hour flight or whatever I, I'd be bending at the knees trying to lift the thing um, so do I miss paramotoring yes and no Mark might kill me for saying that I miss the pure simplicity of it but I don't miss the faff um, I miss being able to throw an aircraft, uh, you know, do my barrel rolls and the sats and the the the, um, the nose down spirals, really throwing it around, which you can't safely do in one of these, not stressed for it. So yeah, that's the only real bits I miss of paramotoring um, in that respect. So hopefully that answers question, Tom. Uh, Geo Thorn, uh, Duncan, nice for your question. If you were to design a sub 70 from scratch, what would your dream build look like? Now. Mm. You can't reinvent the chair too many times, can you? And you can't reinvent triangles and squares too many times. But I think you can use different materials. So if I was to actually um, redesign a sub-70, I, I wouldn't change the wing. It would definitely be the base structure that I'm sat on. And I think the only thing I would do is I would make it in composite and one piece and look like a scorpion you know a tail coming round and all the way through and you sat in a bucket seat and the tank became integral and then there were fairings for the engine and that's what I would do Duncan so yeah that did make me think about that one and I think it would be a composite aircraft um, because it would just have these amazing lines um, to look at uh, so thank you for that Duncan Kevin, Kev Chilton, I always call you Kevin, but I uh, say so you put your channel's Kev Chilton. With your runway, what's the go, no, go wind speeds for the PB? Now the manual says nine miles an hour on a 90 degree crosswind. If it was above 15 miles an hour, I'd kind of th think about not taking off in anything greater than 15 miles an hour. Now the reason for that, in my mind, is flex wings are most vulnerable on the ground okay they're most vulnerable on the ground so you may have a strong enough wind speed um, and that you could handle straight into wind but you've still got to turn around so 15 mile an hour on the nose 9 mile an hour on the crosswind have I landed in more than that? no because I've used other techniques to get me in and I wouldn't uh, um, so yeah it's, it's not the fact of how much wind you can take it's how much the m machine can cater for it to bring it round um, because they're so light you can end up landing and then the wind gets underneath the wing and then then tips you over so it's a balance but yeah nine mile an hour crosswind 90 degree crosswind is the maximum I've landed in uh, that I've known about okay so hopefully uh, Kev that uh, that answers that question and Michael Pollard I kind of nick this from somewhere else because I've mentioned it a few times and he says What's a Raptor? So, a Raptor is a fly like PB trike with an Adam wing that's redesigned so the colour scheme will only be ever particular to the Raptor. Okay. And it has all the bells and whistles that we can put on it that have been custom designed, custom engineered, tested, etc. Um, that sets it apart from a PB but still means it can be sub 70 and that's the key thing a Raptor can be sub 70 and can be SSDR so a lot of time when you put a brake on an aircraft you will add weight which then starts creeping up you start start losing fuel so there's carbon everywhere carbon in the washout rods there's a carbon seat which saves nearly a litre of fuel uh, it's got twin hydraulic disc brakes on the rear, um, compass mounts, uh, uh, pilot aware, just the list goes on. Now, you can't modify the Raptor. You get the Raptor as standard. The only thing you can change is the colour. So, hopefully, Michael, that explains what a Raptor is. And on that note, I think that's actually a long enough video. So, apart from being cold, outside I'm not actually that cold uh, hopefully that you've enjoyed those questions I'll join you on the way back but until next time everybody please fly safe and uh, may 2023 give uh, blue skies and calm winds for everyone so until next time everybody fly safe <laughs>